there comes a time in everyone's business where things aren't going the way you want, want them to go. And you either admit defeat, you pack up, and you run off to the sunset, or you make a drastic change to your business to make things better. That time is now. Welcome to Flip It and Punch It. Today is Monday. Man, it has been such a busy weekend. We got 31 orders to pull today. We sold like over $2,400 worth of items. So that's a great weekend. I mean, hell, before my listing challenge, I wasn't even doing $1,500 a week, you know, because I was focusing on whatnot. And just to do over $2,400 of sales just this weekend is a huge step in the right, right direction. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, back in January, I actually did a listing challenge um, on this channel, which I, my goal was to list 300 items and $25,000 worth of merchandise in the month of January. And it's working out really well, man. I mean, it's, I'm starting to see all the results starting to come in. Our 90 day total is super up, so that's good. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. And there's an aspect of this business that I've been trying to work on for the last couple months. You guys have been a big part of the journey with me and it's just not working. You know, the way I want it to work. If you guys don't know what I'm referring to is it's operation CSO and I'll keep it PG clear stuff out. What we're, what we're trying to do is we are trying to clear out our garage. Um, we have a couple spare rooms at the house we need to clear out. And then we have a massive storage facility that we have filled with merchandise and talking with the wife this weekend, we made a, a decision. We did some spring clean with our, our other stuff. And we decided we're gonna do a big yard sale. So we'll talk more about that, um, what we're gonna be putting out, what we're gonna do, and how we plan on making it the most successful yard sale ever, and some big big ideas that we have for this. So let's pull some orders, we'll talk a little bit more about this later on, and what we're gonna do for this Operation CSO. As you know, we've been selling these empty boxes. So we actually sold four Louis Vuitton. They were really small boxes. We had them listed, I think, for like $15.99 best offer. All right, I think I put them down here. Yeah, it's these ones right here. These are nice and easy. The drawer slips out, but they're tiny. I mean, they're like for like bracelets or something, but we sold, sold four of these actually. So I had these listed for $15.99, best offer, and I ended up selling these anywhere from like 10 bucks to like 12, 13 bucks, but I mean, I paid, these are part of that big box buy. I mean, these are like five bucks a piece, but it was easy, one listing, multi-quantity. And I mean, I'm, I'm okay selling these off for, they're small. And I mean, if I'm making, you know, three, four, five bucks a piece on these, but it's multi-quantity, I'll take that all day long. So we sold four of these for a little under, four of these, roughly around about 45 bucks plus shipping. All right, next time we sold, we sold a Disney pin. This is a special Disney pin from the 33 Club out in Disneyland. Over here, oh uh, yeah, this is one of my whatnot purchases. One in a mystery bag. Um, what's in this bag here? Actually, it was in this bag right here. As you see, 33 Club. Uh, if you don't know, the 33 Club is, it's a very, it's a very expensive club out in California. I think it's like. 10 grand or 20 grand, something like that to be part of it. I don't know all the details, so don't take my word for any, <laughs> anything I just said there. But uh, this is, I know this pin's from that club. I had it listed for 129, 134 bucks, something like that. Um, there wasn't any listed comps on eBay, nothing really sold recently. Someone sent me an offer for 80 bucks, and I went back, I saw a couple auctions, it sold like 50, 60 bucks. I was like, you know what? I'll take it. So 80 bucks plus shipping. All right, next time we sold is. Video game, um, over the weekend we had an awesome, we had an awesome yard sale, and like, I don't know, like around 10 o'clock, 10 something, we showed up to the yard sale and there's an entire table full of video games, which I thought, my first thought right away is, why is there video games here? They must be overpriced. And they were super cheap, and he cut me a big deal, I bought them all, and one of these games was, was in there. This is Left 4 Dead 2. It's actually uh, becoming a hot game, so the problem is though is, Pen over or is it? Ah, crap! I didn't even notice this. They just folded it over. 
Ah, I thought it was <laughs> I thought it was busted. Oh well. Yeah, because of that, I actually sold the game as disc only. I didn't even put a picture of the cover art in there. So they'll be happy they're gonna get the cover art with the disc. Um, I had it listed for $19.99. Buyers sent me an offer for $17 bucks and I accepted. All right, next lot that we sold. This came from that giant CD purchase I, I just did. And we just sold off the majority of those CDs already, which is great. All right, so this is Primus. You got Sailing the Seas of Cheese, Tales from the Punch Bowl, and Anti-Pop. I put these, anytime I get like bands, I try to put the put the CDs together, even though they're like five, $6 CDs. It's a quick way to sell CDs in lots. You know, if you get a bunch of CDs of anywhere from like four to eight bucks, I just put them in lots. If it's a, it's similar bands, and we listed this for nineteen ninety nine, and it sold. So sold in like what a week or two for nineteen ninety nine plus shipping. So happy to see that go. Don't sleep on rock and metal and hip hop CDs, guys. I'm telling you, you can find them anywhere. People always overlook them. And if I go to a yard sale, I see them for like a buck, 50 cents or a buck. I pick them up if if I can buy them in lots. You know, similar bands. If I can get a lot of four or five band, four or five CDs from the same band, it's worth picking up if you can get it for super cheap. Because you know you might get three, four bucks per CD. But if a lot of, say you get five CDs at four bucks a piece, that's 20 bucks. You pay three, four bucks. And it's a quick flip. They usually sell pretty fast on eBay, especially if, if it's a more popular band. Man, I have such a busy day today. Papa Punchin is actually in town. Uh, he's coming to visit, he's gonna come stay with me tomorrow, but he's staying at my sister's house right now. And we are going, and my other family is actually visiting from Pennsylvania. So a bunch of us, we're all going to the Philadelphia Phillies versus the Tampa Bay Rays spring training game today at noon. So I'm trying to get all this, trying to pack up as much items as, as I possibly can to drop it off on my way to the game. So whatever I don't get to today, I'll have to do later on this evening. So you know, I'll probably film this video in, in different sections today. But let's go over a couple other things that we sold. All right, we sold a couple books. You know, we've been selling a ton of these graphic novels. They've been doing really well for us. All right, so we're sell we sold Herbie. Uh, this is volume one from Dark Horse. We had this listed for $29.99. We sent out an offer for $24.99 to buy accepted. So we've got $24.99 plus shipping for this. All right, next thing we sold, we actually sold two different books. It comes from the same series. This is All-Star Volume 9 and Volume 5. Uh, these are pretty much new. This came that massive graphic novel buy I did. I promise you that video will be in the Picking Punching channel very soon. But we end up selling one of them, the Volume 5 for I think, I think we had a list of, I think we had them both listed for like $39.99 plus shipping or something like that. And we sent out, or someone sent us some offers. We sold volume five for $27 plus shipping. And we sold volume nine for $36 plus shipping. Now, if you guys ever come across these books, one thing that I did realize is that the higher volume number always brings more of a premium. And a big part of that reason why is a lot of times when they do produce stuff in volumes, same thing with DVD series, same thing with a lot of things in, in series form. A lot of people will buy the first couple and then later on when the sales are say going down for the items, they do more of a limited print on later later years. Not always, just from my experience. Or the DVDs, you know, people have the season one, season two, season three, and then they fall off season, you know, season four, five, and six, they fall off, and then those later years usually bring up more of a premium. So always keep that in mind. But we sold another patch. <laughs> I am really surprised that these Super Bowl patches are selling as good as they, they actually are selling. So this is the Philadelphia Eagles, New England Patriots. If you guys don't see that right here, Eagles 41, Patriots 33, suck it, Patriot fans. As you can tell with my shirt, I'm actually wearing a Philadelphia Eagles shirt right now and hat, a Phillies hat. So big Philly fan here, born and raised in Pennsylvania. But we had this listed for $39.99, sent out a Buyer sent us an offer for 30 bucks and we accepted. So we got $30 plus shipping for this. Now I have showed you guys the garage many times here in the past and we were doing Operation CSO clear shit out. And I ended up starting to make a nice headway on there. I started getting a nice path in here, started clearing stuff out. And then the last month, let me tell you guys what happened. My mother, my mother-in-law was going through, went through a divorce. So she ended up moving from where she was at. 
She had a washer and dryer. She moved to an apartment, so she couldn't put the washer and dryer there. It was a new washer and dryer, so we took that and put that in the garage. And then my brother-in-law and his wife um, ended up moving like two weeks ago. It was kind of a sudden move. They had a business opportunity, and it would be better for the family, so they had to downsize, and they moved probably like an hour from us. And they had a bunch of stuff to get rid of. And me and the wife, we hate to, you know, hate to see stuff go. We hate to see stuff get thrown away or we hate to see stuff just, you know, especially as value. I mean, that's what I do for a living. So they ended up giving us like a whole SUV filled car full of stuff. So that went into the garage area. So all that hard work I've been doing for the past couple months has been negated by this. So it is slightly defeating in a way, but, 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 you know, anytime you get thrown a curveball, you need to adapt and change in what you guys can do. The good news is because the family is visiting, the spare room in my wife's office is now fully cleaned, cleared out. I still have my game room I need to clear out. And once I clear that out, I'll be filming a lot more videos up there. So two of the rooms in the house are cleared out. We still have one more to go. And then I got my garage. And the, so the ultimate goal here is... We're going to do a yard sale, and I guess my community is doing a yard sale. We are going to participate in there. So if anybody is near in the Tampa Bay area, please send me a private message. I can let you know more of the address or where to go to you know, for the community sale, but we're going to blow stuff out. I mean, I'm talking like, and over the next two weeks, I'll take you guys along this journey of what we're going to sell, blow off. My wife filled two garbage bags full of just clothes. See, here's the thing is, too. We moved two two almost to the day we moved two years ago and when we moved we still have a couple items still in boxes some bags stuff like that we just didn't unpack i know that sounds crazy but a lot of people i, I know people that moved like five ten years ago still haven't unpacked like you know they just threw some boxes in the garages they just kept them there so that goes to show us that stuff that we don't need because if we would have unpacked it we would have needed it so stuff that we can just get rid of so we're gonna blow a clothes for like a buck a piece i'm gonna blow tons of dvds cds super cheap just to blow stuff out also too like i got funko pops i got video game i mean i may have put out hundreds of video games i'm just gonna blow them all out you know we ha i have a whole st storage warehouse filled with items i need to blow out so the ultimate goal is probably to get rid of like 10 totes filled with stuff at this yard sale and then that way i can take the stuff in the garage move to the storage facility and then i have an an, an I have an area to actually work. So that's the ultimate goal, but we'll see how it turns out. All right, so you guys saw the spare room I had before. It's pretty much all cleared out right now. So looking good. This actually pulls out to, there's actually another bed underneath here. So when people come over, we have multiple people that stay there. But yeah, so this is where Papa Punch is gonna be staying. I'm gonna put a TV here on a little stand, and then I can actually use this to test video game systems. Speaking about video game systems, I probably have about a hundred plus video game systems. So if there's anyone who's a local Amazon seller who, oh, eBay questions. Um, if anyone's a local Am Amazon seller, I'm looking to probably sell these in bulk. Majority of them do work, some don't work. So ideally I like some that would repair systems. You guys, if you guys wanna come to yard sale, hit me up on IG. Or if you guys are interested in buying video game systems in bulk, let me know. I mean, at this point in time, I'm trying to get around around eBay prices. So preferably I'd like to look for an Amazon seller that can take get a premium for these or a game shop lo locally that might want to get a premium for these. But hit me up, but let's pull some more orders. All right, so we saw the Mickey Mouse figurine. We're hearing A1, I think, I think this one's in here. It's a cool little one from Santa. I mean, the tail had a little wear in it, but had this listed for $19.99. Someone sent me an offer on like, four or five different pieces. So I ended up making a bulk deal. I got 15 bucks plus shipping on this. So I had these in this box, real fitting that it's a Santa box. I gotta look through and see which one they are. I know I sold. Now I'm gonna put this down for a second. All right, so I have all these here. I'm gonna show you guys what we sold. We sold this one right here. I had it listed for $19.99 and we took an offer for $15 bucks plus shipping. Notice the tail is broken. Make, I did disclose it was broken, but keep in mind a lot of times with these Christmas villages, and unfortunately, they're going to have little small breaks or cracks in them and they still sell. Don't be afraid to list them. Just make sure you list the damage. We actually sold two of these. This is 
Minnie Mouse sewing. Buyer sent us an offer for for 30 bucks for two of them, and we accepted. So nice to see all these go, especially it's great to sell Christmas stuff in March. That just goes to show you, I just sold four items from Christmas. That goes to show you that Christmas stuff sells all year round. So don't wait to list your Christmas stuff. I list it all year round because it sells. Same thing with Halloween. All right, next thing we sold is a pack of cards. This is from 1993-94. This is Flint Ultra Basketball. Uh, this is actually Papa Punchins. I'm selling it for him. So majority of the time, early 90s sports cards don't really sell for that much. Except the only exception is really basketball because of, there's tons of Michael Jordan inserts that are highly sought after. You get them graded, they could bring really good money. So we ended up, we had a list for $19.99 per pack. Um, someone sent me an offer for 15 bucks, so we took it. Got 15 bucks plus shipping for this. All right, so we sold a couple magazines. So this is actually, I don't even know what this is. This is actually a complete guide to HO slot cars. HO is another name you guys want to look out for. This is actually from 2000 and, uh, 1998. A lot of times people will buy these for the pictures and information. So we got, we ended up getting $21.99 plus shipping for that. We actually sold a Kiss magazine. Now, this actually came from Papa Punchin. Um, every time he comes to visit me, I always buy out a bunch of stuff he brings down because he used to have a hauling company. And he brought me down a stack of Kiss magazines. Now, Kiss actually does really well. This is from Punk Rock. This is a Kiss special from 1978. Good condition here. Kind of didn't know what the really price is at, so I had it listed at $54.99, best offer, and I think I sent an offer for $44 bucks plus shipping, and someone accepted, so. Pretty good for an old magazine. All right, we sold a couple more books from this uh, pickup. All right, this is Codex Necrons. This is actually from the Warhammer game. Um, if you guys ever see Warhammer, it's what the thing is right here. Real similar to like a Dungeon Dragon role-playing type of game, but this got... I think $11.99 plus shipping and Vampirella Master Series Volume 2 got us 12 bucks plus shipping. Yeah, a lot of people like those Vampirella books because they don't leave much to the imagination. Let's just put it that way. But, so if you do see them, pick them up. They usually, all the graphic novels, they usually get 10 bucks plus for them. So I know I'm, I said earlier that I feel like I'm failing and I know I'm not failing. My sales are up tremendously from where I was at the beginning of the year. So that's good. You know, to be 100% transparent and honest with you guys, I don't need a source right now. I have so much stuff. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I probably don't need the source for the next three months if I don't need to. But having a YouTube channel that focuses on going out picking does make me go out picking sometimes because I need content. And not to mention my favorite thing in the entire world is to go garage sailing. I always call myself a modern day treasure hunter because it gets my adrenaline flowing. It's fun. I like the challenge to it. You know, finding deals, expanding my knowledge. And... It's, I love it. I absolutely love it. So even if I didn't have a YouTube channel, I would still be going out yard selling every weekend. It's my favorite thing in the world to do. So the point I was getting at, because I have to get content sometimes for my YouTube channel, I do out, I try to be more selective lately, but I just go out and I make these buys. And I am, sometimes I'm not listing, if I pick up 40 items one weekend, if I can only list 20 of it, you know, before I go out sourcing again, that's an issue, not to mention all my back stock. So say I, I failed, I just, you know, I keep clearing stuff out. I'm doing really good. I mean, we're getting rid of a ton of stuff. I just keep adding more stuff on top of it. So that's the problem. So I think I need to do just a drastic change and move stuff. I, I honestly want to get my workspace in the garage completely cleared out so I can have a functioning area in there, maybe put a desk in there or a table with my laptop and just be able to get more stuff done. And I think it'd be real, really crucial to the business. So, but anyway, so we're going to have this yard sale. So let me know down in the comments, any tips or tricks from your yard sales that you guys have done. I know I'm going to go out and get a ton of change for it. I'm going to make it the greatest yard sale. All right. Next time we sold, we sold a Star Wars figure. This is Jango Fett. Picked this up at the Peaches of Beaches. Came in that massive buy. I think I paid, I don't know. A buck or two for this but we end up getting i think i had it listed for 34.99 plus shipping and the buyer sent me an offer for 30 bucks and i accepted so 30 bucks plus shipping all right next time we sold is actually a dvd from ring of honor all right it's justice 2 justice two. this is it here justice 2 all right we got justice 2 right here 
I think I sell this for like $5.99 plus shipping. I literally have like a quarter into these. So just trying to blow them out now. All right, so this is the other room I cleared out. Usually put an air mattress here where people stay, but. All right, guys, I want to show you this. We're doing a whatnot Wednesday night, and we're going to blow out a ton of Disney stuff. So make sure you guys do come in, check it out. I'll put the link down in the description down below. Disney pins, Christmas uh, ornaments, plushies, special edition pin sets. I mean, all kind of the random vintage items. But we'll probably have about 50, 60 items in there. So go, come check it out Wednesday night. It'll be a good time. Come hang out with us. If you use the link down in the description down below, you got 15 bucks just for signing up. All right, next time we sold is actually a Ninja Turtle figure. It's from the NECA set. For those who don't know, these are actually Target exclusives. And we had it listed for $19.99. Someone sent me an offer for 15 bucks. We accepted. So I ended up getting 15 bucks plus shipping for this. I had this, came in a massive toy lot I got a while back. I already made my money back, so pure profit. All right, this next sale was absolutely incredible and also sad at the same time. So a lot of times if it's something that I really, really like, I'll price it super high, not wanting to sell it. But then the right offer comes in, as a million dollar man, Ted DiBiase would always say. And everyone, everyone has a price. Everyone has a price. And uh, I'll show you what it is. It's actually super cool. I'm, I probably never get one of these again. So this is a Nolan Ryan rookie card. I had this professionally graded, came in as a PSA 3 from 1968. I mean, it's very all standard, corners are round, but does present nice in the case, I will say that. Had this listed for $799 plus shipping, and someone sent me an offer for 600 bucks. I counted at 700 and they accepted. So I like it, but I don't, I'm at $700 liking it. <laughs> so it's gonna be sold, but. Yeah, I'm sad to see it go. It's a super cool card to have. The 12 year old boy inside me never would have believed I would have had a Nolan Ryan rookie card at one point in my life. So, super cool, cool moment. That came from mass. That came from a massive buy a couple years ago. Um, I ended up buying like, spent a thousand dollars on comic books and like sports cards. I think I had like 650 bucks in the sports cards and like 300 bucks, 350 into the comics. So, it was a nice, it was a nice come up. And, you know, but I also had to pay to have those cards graded. I had to pay, you know, time to send them off, tie up my money. I spent, you know, a couple hundred dollars just on grading the, the lot of cards I had. So, but we're going to put out a video on that here in the, in the future about grading comic books, grading VHS, grading video games. Um, just so you guys have a better understanding what to look out for. I get a lot of questions on that. So I think it'd be very good for you guys. And also too, if there's something you guys want me to make a video of, or if you have questions, put the questions down in the comment below, man. I love to answer questions when I'm doing these videos. Sometimes it's hard to come up with all kinds of different topics to talk about. So if you guys have questions, something you want me to talk about, put it in the comments because I will answer them either on the video or in the comments. All right, so I'm back from the baseball game. Want to go see the Phillies play, play the Tampa Bay Rays and Clearwater. Is that the Phillies uh, minor league stadium there? It is, I think it was the last game of spring. <clears throat> if I'm not mistaken, I think it was the last game of spring training. And look at my face. I'm all burnt. I didn't even realize that that I got freaking burnt, but had a good time. My aunt, my uncles were in town from Pennsylvania and we all got to go hang out. I had a couple cousins there, my dad, my sister. So I had a good time. Speaking of my dad, Papa Punch is coming to stay with me tomorrow. So you'll probably see him in some upcoming picking videos here, but uh, let's get back to where we left off. Let's pull some more orders. Now, I got a really cool Bonanza sale. I know, Bonanza, right? I don't know if you guys know this, but the Commonwealth Picker actually owns Bonanza. Ask him about it. So see this right here? This is actually a cake, a cake tray. Now it does have a little crack there, which I did did disclose in there, but got this from a massive pickup. I actually got two of these. One of these brand new, one was damaged. Had that listed, maybe like 60. I got around 60 bucks plus shipping on that. So gotta get that out. The lady says she wants to use it for her wedding, so. A lot of pressure, <laughs> make sure that thing arrives intact and that gets there in one piece. All right, next time we sold is this guitar from Guitar Hero. Shinoro Gibson guitar. Now, how you guys can tell this is from Nintendo Wii. Nintendo Wii actually has a little spot there for them for that you put the controller in. I would say I love picking these up because 95% of the time they work because you're putting a Wii remote in there. 
So it's just running off the Wii remote. And uh, yeah, so I, I put this up. I actually got $59.99 plus shipping for this. Great sale. Super pumped about that. All right, so I had an hour drive back to my house from after the game. So I started thinking about this yard sale I want to do. And I want you, let me know in the comments down below. Do you guys want me to record it? I thought it'd be kind of cool content where I'm on the actual other side of doing a yard sale where people are coming up to me, they want deals, I gotta cut them deals. I thought it'd be kind of cool. But then I started thinking, I was like, you know, if I'm gonna do this yard sale, I wanna make it like spectacular. You know, it's gotta be fun, gotta be. So I thought of some cool ideas I could do, you know, um, find different ways to negotiate with people. Maybe put out a wheel that, you know, people spend X amount of dollars. They could spin the wheel win additional prizes. I don't know. So if you guys have any ideas or things you guys think I should add into my yard sale, leave a comment down below. I, I'm not, I think it was dealing with Dalton or, or Profit Monsters. One of the two had a yard sale and what they did was they actually hid some expensive items at their garage sale. So I thought that was a really cool item. Give people a reward for coming out. Uh, so, I mean, I, get pl I have plenty of stuff I can do that with. So I don't know, we'll see. But if you guys have any good ideas or stuff that maybe you guys want to see in the video, let me know in the comments down below because I've got like two weeks to prepare for this. All right, next item that we sold is Hanberry Mint. This is the 1990, 1969 Chevy Camaro. Can't really tell by the box there, so I'll put a picture up of what the car looks like right there. But we end up getting, I had it listed for 99. I had it listed for like 100 bucks. Someone sent me an offer for 60 and I took it. I think I had maybe, this came from that big Disney buy. I maybe have 20 bucks into it, so. And I figured, hey, if I quick triple my money, if I can quick triple my money, why not? So we got $60 plus shipping for that. Next time I sold, I actually got this, the Peaches, the Beaches event up in Georgia. I think I may drop this video. It's either gonna be this week or next week. Um, I got two more Peaches, uh, Peaches, the Beaches videos to drop. And one of them was getting dropped this week, and then the next one's gonna drop the, uh, the following week on my Pick and Punching channel. Got this 1987 Thunderbird combo right here. This was brand new in the box. I think I had it listed for $39.99, some type of offer for $25. Bucks, and I took it. They're big, and a lot of these bigger boxes, some going to be a fair offer. I'll just I'll accept it just to get it out of here. Plus, I don't have that much into the actual buy. That starts to help recruit my money in this buy because I don't have a lot of money into the buy. So anytime I do a big buy, I always want to make sure that I can try to recruit my original investment as soon as possible. Then that way everything else is pure profit going forward. Yeah, as I'm filming this, I just get hit with a return. Ugh, sucks. So I sold a modem. Um, they said the modem didn't work. I don't know. It turned on. It did connect. And they said it didn't connect. So that's the one crappy thing about selling electronics. Electronics always have a high return rate, unfortunately. I think they, the going, I think the average return rate on electronics is like, it's over 10%, like 11 or 12% on there. Mines, I mean, mines, my overall store return rate is probably less than 1%. I don't have a lot of returns, but this one, this one kind of hurts because it's a hundred dollar return, but it's part of the business it is what it is. I'll get it back. I'll test it out. If it doesn't work, I'll put it up for parts. At least I got a big portion of that money back anyway. So, all right, you guys remember I did that big CD buy? I've been selling those CDs. Well, all the ones that were like 10 bucks or less, I ended up putting a giant lot on, I think it was like 60 different CDs. I mean, you got 311, Pearl Jam, Anthrax, The Crow soundtrack, Tupac. I mean, what else was in here? The Eagles, Johnny Cash, a little Ozzy Osbourne. A ton of different stuff in here. Stone Temple Pilots, but anyway. There were 60 CDs in there. I listed for $99.99. Someone sent me an offer for 65 bucks and I took it. I'm trying to clear stuff out. This is a big box full of CDs and I wanted it gone as soon as possible. Now I paid $100 for 75 CDs. So as you guys saw in my last video, or as you guys been, my last couple of videos, I've been selling off these CDs. I made them. We already made back our, our initial investment. So all this is pure profit. So pretty happy with that. And I'm happy that big lot sold already. My big lots of uh, rock CDs usually sell pretty fast. All right, this sale really surprised me because when I originally picked these up, I picked this up in a private pick, wasn't sure, you know, the value. Of them. I didn't pay much. I may have paid like 40 bucks for this big lot of like peanut stuff. Didn't realize they're gonna sell as well as they did. So we just sold this. Marcy and Peppermint Patty. This is in the baseball dugout. Had this listed 
Have this listed on eBay for $159.99. Best offer. Hoping to get. Who knows what I would get from it. I, know I just threw it up there. Wasn't a lot of comps on there. And someone bought it internationally. So did not send me an offer. Just bought it outright. So it sold for $160 plus shipping. I was shocked by that. So I'm going to wrap this video up here. Let you know. We are going to be going live on Whatnot on Wednesday night. I think the same day this video drops. So on Wednesday night, we'll be live on Whatnot. I think around 7 p.m. We're doing an all Disney show. It's going to be Disney pins, Disney plush, Disney vintage Disney items. Um, all kind of really cool Disney stuff. Make sure you guys check it out. I'll put the link down in the description down below there. And I appreciate all the support that we've been getting, all the comments, all the feedback. Also, to put your questions down below. If you guys want me to answer questions, I will answer everybody's questions. So we can talk about it in the video. So I'm looking for more input from you guys. And make sure you like and subscribe. It really does help with the channel. But until next time, guys, make sure you guys keep flipping and punching.